everyone, welcome back. It's Melissa and today I'm going to be doing the high school makeup challenge. Now I want to start off by saying uh, I'm probably going to be one of the oldest YouTubers on the planet to be doing this challenge. I graduated from high school in 1978. So there is absolutely no prayer of me finding any of the products that I used back then still on the market today. And I did do a lot of research trying to pull up the different products that I remember using to see if I could find uh, vintage photographs of them, which I did find several um, that I am able to include in this video. And also, as a reminder, uh, back in the uh, late 70s, uh, the internet was not around, so we didn't have all the resources a lot of young people have today to learn about makeup and learn about different brands. It was very much a self-discovery kind of thing. And I would say most of my makeup came from the drugstore. Actually, I could say all my makeup came from the drugstore because that was what was accessible to me and to fit my budget at that time. So before I jump into what I actually wore during that period of time, I thought it would be interesting to share who were the major influencers for me. Since I didn't have the internet to reach out to and gather knowledge from, it was all from kind of pop culture. One of them was Cher. We all wanted to be her with that long, beautiful hair, the long nails. She had outrageous makeup most of the time. She was really fun to watch. The next one is Farrah Fawcett. If she doesn't epitomize the late 70s, I don't know what is. She had the perfect feathered hair, that fresh-faced, beautiful look, beautiful white teeth, and uh, all the girls wanted to be her, and all the boys wanted to date her. And then the last one I would say would be Donna Summer. I was a huge disco fan. She was my absolute favorite. I was thrilled that I got to see her in concert uh, recently before she passed away, which made me very, very sad. She was fabulous in concert, even currently. Her voice was terrific. And she was just so beautiful. Uh, I just, I can't even describe how I felt about that woman. Okay, so let's jump into this high school photo, which is what I am working off of. Uh, I would say right off the bat that this photograph is kind of warm. I think the tone that the photographer used was kind of a warm tone because when I look at it, it just reads very warm. But I can still see basically the products, you know, kind of what I was doing at that time, and I can remember what I was doing at that time. I'm going to start off by saying I did not wear foundation at all. I will say that girls in my high school did wear foundation, and a lot of them uh, chose that cover girl, uh, that classic cover girl formula. I can remember seeing girls after gym uh, pulling that out and putting it on and actually thinking, God, your skin is so beautiful. Why are you even putting that shit on? Well, I'm sorry. So, but because... Um, I don't want to go barefaced. I am going to go ahead and apply a little bit of sunscreen to just kind of give me a nice base because I will be going out after this. And this is not something that the value of sunscreen was not even talked about when I was in high school or even when I was, oops, that's some here even when I was, um, you know, a young adult. It wasn't until a little bit later that, you know, people really talked about the value of sunscreen and anti-aging. Uh, anti You'll also notice in this picture uh, my hair. A, that's its natural color. And uh, B, there's very strong influence from what I would consider one of the first, like, hair goddesses. Obviously, if you were from that era, you know that this was greatly influenced by Dorothy Hamill, who uh, won a gold medal in the Olympics during that period of time, and everybody had this wedge haircut. I mean, everybody. Let's jump into eyeshadow. Now, I remember the eyeshadow that I wore the most during high school. I actually repurchased this product more than once because I would hit pan and use it all up. It was uh, from Revlon, and it was a matte brown, like a reddish, rosy brown uh, color, and it came in a, in a single pan. I was able to find some photographs of that particular product. 
on the internet. The internet's such a wonderful thing, let me just say. <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, but of course that's not available, and so I crawl through my collection to see what I had that could kind of fall into that category. I wanted to stay true to a uh, matte fa uh, formula, but I couldn't necessarily stick with a drugstore brand, so I'm going to be using um, a shadow out of the Tarte Tartlet palette, the first one, and this one is uh, Natural, where is it? Let me make sure I get the right one. Natural Beauty. I just took it straight out of the pan and applied it to my lids. And I would use the applicator that came with the shadow, and it was just a little sponge tip applicator. I had to dig pretty hard in my stash to find, actually find, a sponge tip applicator, which <clears throat> they work fine, but they don't blend as well as, say, <clears throat> a brush does. So I would apply this all over my lid and up to, to my crease. I didn't use a brow bone shade or highlighter. I think at this point in time, makeup was had gone from, you know, the late 60s where there was a lot of color in makeup and it went all the way up to the brow bone to a more natural look and a lot browns were kind of like the like big discovery in makeup at this point in time. So it was very much a dialed back look uh, at this point in time uh, from my perspective. So you'll notice you're going to go, oh, there's no blending. But I do have a little trick that I used to do a little later on as part of my kind of, kind of blending process, if you will. So the other thing I used to do was take the edge of the sponge tip applicator and run it into the shadow so I had just kind of a little bit on the edge and I would run that along under my eyes along the lash line to get kind of a a little bit of a lined effect there. Now I'm going to come back to finish the eyes but in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and put some blush on. So I don't really remember which blush I used from the drugstore. I'm pretty sure I used Revlon blush because that was my favorite brand. I thought it was a really good quality brand after experimenting with some of the other ones that were available in the drugstore. I would definitely say the brands that I liked the best from the drugstore were Revlon, um, Almay, uh, Yardley, which was kind of a British import, and you know the Beatles were so big so that you know, Mary Quant, all that kind of played into it, and uh, probably Bonnie Bell for lip products. For today's look, I went into my makeup collection and just pulled a drugstore uh, blush that I have, and the one I have is from Wet n Wild, and it's the Pearlescent Pink. Now, I've since long ago thrown out this brush, but I would have just grabbed the brush that came with it to put it on. I don't have that, so I'm just going to grab a little blush brush. This one is from e.l.f. It's one of my favorites. And I used to just, you know, put that on. You know, there wasn't any contouring, any bronzer. Um, bronzing, you know, there were bronzy colors that came into play a little bit later on. But uh, for the most part, it was straight up just whatever blush color you wanted. When I was done doing my blush, then I would just go in with my big old blush brush that came with the pan, and I would just use that to kind of deposit a little bit of color to tie the look all together and to kind of blend that out. I thought I was very clever. Now, I do remember uh, from time to time wearing a little bit of black liner. Black liner was pretty popular back at that point in time. And it was, I'm pretty sure, this Maybelline product that came in a red pencil. It was kind of short. And it was one of those wooden pencils that she sharpened. Now, it sharpened like crap most of the time. It was very frustrating. And for many years, I wouldn't buy a, a wooden pencil when I'm given the option because it really turned me off to that. Nowadays the wooden pencils are really so much better and they sharpen so much better. Um, plus that particular product was very hard and it was something that you could use on your brows or on your 
uh, lash line, but it was really too hard to use on your lash line, and a lot of girls would use a lighter, mm -hmm. so they would just take the tip, use like a little Bic lighter, and just push the tip into the flame to soften it, and maybe melt it a little bit. You had to be really careful that it didn't like totally melt down or it was too hot to put close to your eyes and burn your eyes. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> swear to God, that's what we used to do back in the day. And it was also, uh, I felt like it really helped make that last a lot longer. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my lower lash line, which is what I would have done during this time. It's not represented in my uh, reference photo. That was my graduation photo, so it was kind of like, okay, you know, you have to kind of do your makeup for your mom and dad so that they approve, if you know what I mean. So, um, but I would wear this not every day, and uh, not necessarily every day to school, probably more for when I would be going out and doing something special. Um, I would do this, and a lot of girls did this. I never put any liner along my top lash line because I didn't feel like it really showed very much. And since I do have hooded eyes, and I had hooded eyes back then, a lot of times the uh, liner would transfer up onto my lid, and I didn't like that. I didn't know about, you know, good waterproof liner or uh, liquid liner so much, or even setting it with a dark black shadow powder. I don't even ever remember seeing anything that dark in the drugstore. It just didn't exist. So I pretty much skipped that. And I also think a lot of girls use this technique because it was easy to do. You didn't, it didn't require a lot of skill. You're kind of new to makeup. Just lining your waterline kind of gives you a pretty sophisticated, badass look <laughs> without having to have too many skills. So then I would finish it off with mascara. But one of the first mascaras I used was the Great Lash Mascara, which is remarkably still on the market today, and I think my sister still uses it. I think she started off with that in high school and she never has strayed. Uh, so I'm going to use my favorite drugstore mascara, which is the L'Oreal Voluminous Butterfly. Oh, this is fabulous. So uh, you'll notice I haven't done anything to my brows. I never did anything to my brows. Um, I didn't use concealer, I didn't, you know, I used very little face products on my face at that time. I just felt I didn't like the way they felt, I didn't really feel like I needed them, and I probably didn't really at that time. So let's move on to lips. So I remember um, in high school I really disliked my lips, I felt they were very large for my face, you know. Gosh, we are just so self-critical, and especially at that age. I look back now and I think, oh, my lips are great, and now I'm glad that they were fuller then because they're still fairly full now. Um, so it's just one of those things, why are we are so hard on ourselves. So I didn't really want to emphasize them too much. I remember I used a lot of Vaseline just, you know, to keep them moist looking, or just kind of a neutral lip gloss, or something like, um, like a Bonnie Bell kind of like a lip smacker or something that had a little, maybe a little bit of tint to it or something like that. So I went ahead and I pulled out um, my baby lips. This is in the shade Mauve. I, I think this might have been limited edition and I just opened a fresh back up of this. This is my last one. So I would have just used something like this throughout the day on my lips. I do remember there was one kind of lip product that I used for like special occasions, and I I, can't, I can see it in my head, I can't remember who made it, and it was like, it came in a tube, a, you know, much smaller tube than this, and it just a flat, when you open the top, it was just flat with a little teeny tiny hole, and you would push out a little product, and pick it up on your finger, and spread it around, and I remember using that in high school, and then on my wedding day, uh, gasp. <laughs> I, I'm shudder to think how old that product was when I used it on my wedding day. Yeah, because I got married right out of college. It had to be at least five or six years old. <laughs> Don't know. There was no education back then about how long you should keep products. And, you know, if it didn't smell bad, it didn't separate or look weird, you used it. 
Some of the other things that I really love during this time is perfume. I have a very strong memory of wearing a uh, perfume called Jean Tu and Halston. Halston might have been a little bit later on in life, but I can remember getting ready to go out and my mother being out in the backyard and the windows were open. She'd be like, Melissa, I can smell you out here. I think you have enough perfume on. It's like, whoa, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but I loved it. I loved, I wore perf perfume quite a bit. And the other thing was nails. Nail polish was uh, definitely a go-to item for me. It was easily accessible and you could find it in the drugstore very easily. My favorite brand was Cutex. Probably a lot of you don't know that Cutex used to make nail polish. I think I liked it a lot because the bottle was really cool and I was able to find some photographs of that bottle. I just like memories came rushing back. So here's my finished look and very simple minimal makeup and I think which is fairly typical of girls that age. Uh, it was only some of the really more sophisticated girls that wore foundation uh, in my high school. Usually cheerleaders of which I was not one. So I would love to know what are some of your earlier makeup memories or if you did this challenge and did a video, go ahead and include it below or link it or send it to me somehow, tweet it to me so I can um, take a peek at what some of your early makeup situations were. So thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you real soon in my next video. Take care. Bye.